If you're watching this video, it's because you've just taken the great decision to start using Exa to start adding some structure to your training. It's a fantastic decision that you've made, but I get it, you log in, it's a little bit complicated to start. This video is the first part in a multi-part series about getting you up to speed with using Exa. Now, I just wanna jump into Exa and get you through the initial stages of just getting set up and understanding the basics and start feeding it some data. So. Let's flip in and get started. Now, my the reason I'm doing this video right now is because I've just come off a particular time of very high stress in my life and been a bit ill. So my current status is gonna be probably similar to a lot of you just starting with Excerpt. And the great thing about Excerpt is all about that fitness signature. We're just not looking at one metric that like you might be used to. We're now looking at lots and lots of different metrics, which is super cool. Now, so you log in, um, you'll get a picture of you. Now the little star you won't get on that. That's just to show you that I'm an extra ambassador and we have a coaching group. It's just to give you an idea of who I am when you find me in the public profile. And underneath here, you'll see the name Prosciutto. I'm not a prosciutto. I'm going to talk you through what that actually means in a second. Training status and form at the moment, I'm showing one orange star. That's is really, really important. And I'll talk you through that in a second. Um, the big thing really, and this is really highlights what I was just saying about being um, highly stressed and detraining recently, is that the last breakthrough I had, the last fitness breakthrough uh, was five months ago. <laughs> big big red flag. This is great because what I'm about to show you is going to be really relevant to you if you're picking up this and trying to find some structure and move forward because you'll be in almost the same place as I am right now. Now, these little squares here, these are the big exciting things. Now, you're probably coming from a platform where you're very familiar with using things like FTP and threshold power. So the first big metric you see there, we you don't use the word functional threshold power in here, but they're essentially the same thing. There are some nitpicking details. Don't worry about them right now. But if this number doesn't perfectly match your FTP, don't worry about it. It should be relatively close. And if it's miles out, there's a red flag and I'll show you how to sort that out in a second. But it should be round about what your FTP is. High intensity energy is probably a very new metric to you. Maybe you've come from a more advanced platform where you've talked about something called Watt Prime. Maybe you haven't. If high intensity energy is really new to you, you're gonna love this feature. So this is actually measured in kilojoules and it's a measure of the amount of energy available to you once you're training harder than your threshold power. So once you've gone over that threshold, that is, the threshold is there, it's a marker. Once you've got over that, how how much can you sustain? You know, measured it in actual kilojoules. Super cool feature, you're gonna love it. Next up is peak power. Peak power is really important. It's probably something that you haven't measured for a long time and it could be well out, but peak power is important in helping us calculate high intensity energy and something that you're gonna come across called MPA, maximum power available. It's not shown here, but it's really important. The next metric is gonna be individual, depending on this, what you've chosen as your focus. Now, that word focus is gonna be super important with your exit understanding as well. So at the moment, this is showing three, meter, three minute power because I've chosen Pursuita as my focus. The next uh, and really important one there is your lower threshold power because Exert generally works on a polarized training model. It wants you to do those um, nice, easy, low intensity training sessions as much as those high intensity sessions as well. And some really clever features in Exert actually build the workout around this lower threshold power. It should be fairly close to your zone two, sometimes the boundary between zone two, zone three, your aerobic, but you should be completely aerobic in this zone and it adjusts constantly. So first thing you wanna do is when you get into Exa is you wanna start feeding it some data and get some metrics up there. And the easiest way to do that is to start syncing up your old activities. Now you can upload things manually if you want to. You can actually use the Exa iPhone or Android app and just record your data like you would do with Strava, super cool way of doing it. And we will get that into that in another video. Most of you are probably going to be using Strava 
our Garmin Connect. And maybe if you have a Garmin, you're using two of those. So I'd just take a pause and just think how you want your data circles to, to turn out. So if you go, if you have a Garmin and it goes into Garmin Connect and then goes to Strava, just click Garmin Connect and just do that. If you use lots of different devices, so maybe use a, a Sunto watch, but use a Garmin on your uh, bike, but everything goes up to S Strava, then I'd probably just choose Strava. You can also sync your Strava segments, which opens up a really cool new feature which we'll get into when you've got your Garmin and out on the road and it actually gives you some great pacing uh, tips on how to beat those Strava segments you know but that's that's down the line it's something to enjoy outside for now we're just getting set up so some super, super cool stuff next thing you want to do is get yourself set up with the, the phone apps these are going to make life a lot easier the phone apps are great to access in information but what we're doing today is really about understanding all the uh, the metrics behind it that's important so I go and have a look at those as also if you use Garmin there are some fantastic Garmin Connect IQ apps which are just going to blow your mind in terms of things like time to exhaustion uh, maximum power available what is your FTP live pretty much as you ride there's some really clever stuff in there again another video we'll get into the rest of this again in more videos workout sessions thing to really look for here is this community so there's other coaches like myself out there that have coaching communities that use exa as part of their coaching uh, offer and generally speaking as you go through these four things so clubs teams uh, squads and coach you give up more and more of your information so if you have a coach you're pretty much giving the coach full access to look at all your activities Whereas with clubs, you're giving away fairly minimal amount of stuff and you're just comparing yourself to other people in the club. Um, maybe your coach has already asked you to do this, in which case you have a coaching community and, and you join it. Um, power curve and calculator, there's some really technical stuff in here, but there's always um, these help menus and the blog and the podcast. And now they have a YouTube channel as well is fantastic. There's some really good data in there. Um, it can get quite technical uh, uh the great thing about exa is you can look at it at face value and use a video like this which is a bit more of an overview or you can really <laughs> really dive into it and really start to educate yourself and understand things totally up to you this video is just about getting you started okay so let's assume that you've brought a whole load of activities in and you've got a whole list of activities just like i have here with some workouts that you might have done on zwift and some that you've you know, done outside on the road. Some of it might have a power meter attached. Some of it might might not. With Exa, if it's got a power, it likes to work on power. But if you only have a heart rate monitor, you can do that as well. But you need to activate it. So you need to come up here to your name and your account settings. And in these account settings, you will now be able to undo your profile turn on these two features here. So enable estimation of excerpt metrics like XSS using heart rate and auto estimate these heart rate parameters as well. Now you can change these if you want to, if you know what your resting heart rate is and you know what your maximum heart rate is. I, I just leave it to auto estimate because when it registers new highs and new lows, it, it works out for you. I don't use a heart rate monitor that often. Maybe you do. If you are doing this mostly heart rate monitor based, if you can add a cadence sensor to your setup, then the addition of the cadence sensor and heart rate together actually gets pretty close to estimating your, your power. And it's definitely definitely worth doing. If you just rely on a heart rate, add a cadence sensor, it will make a bit of difference. Now, it's going to be tempting when you look in this screen, when you've uploaded your data to go, oh my God, my threshold power is well out. I'm going to adjust it here. I'm going to adjust that there. Don't do that just yet. We might need to, but maybe not just yet. But while I'm in the screen, just want to show something that's really clever with Excerpt that you probably haven't come across. And that is the idea of decay and your starting load. Because actually, if you don't train, then Excerpt will decay your training, which is great, I think. Because if you do have to take a few weeks off for family or whatever it is, then when you come back in, it's not reminding how good you were six months ago it's like this is where we think you are now and everything's a lot more realistic so i think this is 
pr pretty good pretty good feature okay let's get back to my fitness signature okay so if you check those and if you've activated the heart rate it's probably run a whole load of updates and start updating this fitness signature you'll get a whole bunch of notifications telling you what's happened if they're still wrong and they still look way out it's probably because there's a workout with some really weird data in it excerpt has this feature where you can flag workouts where you suspect something's gone wrong so maybe your heart rate monitors just broken and it's registered like 200 beats a minute for like a minute or something or maybe it just cut out completely and you didn't have any data there maybe your, your power meter stop whatever it is you, you get the idea i think you'll fa be fairly familiar with cycling tech so you can very quickly just scroll through some of your headline activities and if you see someone one that's a bit like whoa that's a bit strange then you can flag it and all it will do is it won't use the data in that workout as a means of calculating your fitness signature. So pretty cool feature, uh, and it will hopefully correct a whole load of errors in there as well. You'll normally find that these are associated with a breakthrough. So you might see a big flag saying breakthrough, and over here it will tell you that you've suddenly gone up like 300 watts in your peak power or something because it's you've had a massive power spike from your power meter or whatever it might be. So it's okay. It won't delete the, all the activities. It will still recognize that you did the hours. It will still have the training stress there, but it won't use any of those parameters to update your fitness signature. So just click the flag icon and it will sort it all out. Okay, so let's assume that you think you've got a good feed of all your historical data and maybe you've done a couple of excerpt workouts now and you think this fitness signature is kind of right. Maybe you haven't set a peak power because you haven't done a peak power yet. Doesn't really matter. If your threshold power is still really wrong, go back into that account settings, go to your profile, and rather than set your threshold power where you think it is, set it like 20 watts below. And what that will do is it means that when you go and do a, another hard ride, it should trigger what they call a breakthrough. And when Excerpt picks up that there has been a new achievement reached, it'll update it properly as to where it thinks it should be. So little top tip, just drop it down. You'll find that Excerpt also kind of does this for you in a cruel way, is that sometimes you'll try really, really hard on a work on a workout and you'll get what you call near breakthrough. Or, um, and all of a sudden you go, oh, I almost got a breakthrough and I almost got a new thing, a fitness signature, but it actually dropped it down and you'll log on in one day and you go, what, it took three watts off my FTP. It does that on purpose because it recognizes that your fitness signature probably needs a little update. So it makes it a little bit easier for you so that you can then go on and achieve it and get that breakthrough and update things properly. Like I say, really, really clever. Now this video is getting fairly long. So I'm gonna skip out these activity training, etc. We're gonna do that in another video. But I just want to show you the goals. This is a really exciting feature that you should definitely pay attention to. Now, in here, you probably want to start filling in these details. This slider I'll cover in a second. And you want to start thinking, do I want to do, am I training for a target event? If so, put that target event date in. The athlete type, <laughs> this can get pretty tricky. For now, pick something off this list that you think best describes the type of riding that you do. Now we can manipulate this depending on the seasons and the type of weaknesses that you might be trying to train. But generally speaking, at the top of the list, the focus duration will be very short. And at the bottom of the list, the focus duration will be very long, like three hours. Now, just because you might be doing a long endurance event doesn't necessarily mean that you should choose the longest one because if you're doing an event that has lots of hills in it, for example, or maybe it's a got you need the ability to sprint or have explosive efforts like a mountain bike race or a cross bike race then you need to choose something a bit different also what we can do with the seasons here is if you need to put your intensity into the winter when the weather's really really foul but then add your endurance later on what we call reverse periodization then we can change things like that so for now just choose something that you're happy with um at the moment 
I like to work on reverse periodization and I tend to use prosciutto. That gives me workouts which are quite intense, build up my force production, build up my power. Um, and I match that with some nice long, slow endurance training outside. So it's um, all right. The improvement rate, don't get carried away here. <laughs> start, start low and work your way up. Now, I'm assuming that you've logged into Excel for the first time and you want to start making progress. I know you're full of enthusiasm and it's dead tempting to like whack it up to, yeah, I can do this. You probably can't. Start slow and build it up as you're happy because what will happen is the excerpt will start prescribing greater and greater training volume. Now, you might be able to handle it, but you've also got to think about, can I actually build that into my lifestyle? Because the volume will creep up quite rapidly if you choose a high improvement rate. So I'd stick with slow, get used to a steady amount of hours per week. And then if you need to increase it, um, you can do and you find the time to increase it. Generally speaking, slow to moderate is going to work on um, between six to eight hours. Moderate one is going to get you around 10 hours. Uh, and after that, it's going to change quite a lot depending on, on, on what you're looking for. So keep it around slow to moderate one to start with until you get some data in there and you're happy with it. I'm going to keep it at slow for now. I'm doing about six to seven hours a week and I'll probably ramp it up to 10 to 12 during the summer. So continuous is pretty much what it says it's not really training for anything but you just want to make some steady improvements rather than detraining you just want to be able to log in oh what can i do today what would be a great activity to do excel will give you that advice and challenge is a bit like that but if you now at least want to go yeah can i follow a training program for three months say you can put that in there and just follow a program for three months, see the fitness gains, go out and enjoy that fitness gains, and then go back to being unstructured if you want to. I like the fact that with Excerpt, you can dip in and dip out um, as lifestyle allows. Now, I'm going to keep mine at a target event and like this. And you can see it gives me some ideas of roughly what I should expect. Now, I should have 23 training load. My threshold power might go up by 13 watts. It doesn't sound overly exciting so like i say don't get carried away because once you're on top of the slow improvement rate you can always come back in and go yeah actually i'm okay with the slow improvement rate i still feel pretty fresh you can modify it now talking of freshness this is the last part of the video i promise you and it's dead important and that is underneath your name here you will see these stars and they'll be colored and this is one of the really one of the best features of excerpt this gives you an idea about your training status and your state of fatigue just in one easy to look at understand graph now i'm one start moment i'm probably doing four to five hours mostly actually in the strength gym which that's a whole other <laughs> like uh podcast about how we do strength training in here so i'm not putting in my strength training that's where most of my focus in is at the moment so i'm doing two outdoor rides i'm doing two excerpt workouts and i'm doing about four to five sessions in the gym working on my strength that's just what i need right now so this is excerpt is showing me that i'm doing fairly low cycling volume and it's given me one star as we go through the season and you up your training volume you will see these stars start to fill up and they'll fill up like one and a half, you know, two stars, two and a half, three stars. Very, very few athletes actually achieve five stars. That's really top level pro. Amazing if you're doing it. Um, quite, quite a lot of people achieve three stars and a few people will probably nudge into four stars, maybe after they've done like a big training camp holiday or absolutely in the peak, peak of the summer. The important thing here is the colors. Now I've just got a little chart that um, excerpt used to show you what the colors mean now if you are very tired very fatigued it will flag up red like warning 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 you're very tired be careful what you do with your training and it will suggest very easy workouts if at all after that it'll start showing um, a bit tired approach with caution then you'll get fresh um, very fresh is green and then you'll be detraining. So when you haven't actually done enough to actually have a training benefit, then you'll start getting brown. 
So generally speaking, Exa was kind of wants to keep you in sort of the yellow, blue type of area. So constantly tired to the point where you're making some adaptations, but not so tired that you now have the, the consequences of that. Now, what this chart I've just put up on the screen shows you is that when you're unfit, I only have one or maybe two stars, you're more likely to see those stars colored red and yellow. As you get fitter and you can sustain more training load and more training volume, you're less and less likely to see those stars turn yellow and red. You're much more likely to see them yellow and blue um, and occasionally green. You know, so the fitter you get, obviously the quicker you can recover, the more training load you can handle and the, the stars will reflect that. So when you first start into Excerpt, if you haven't got much data, you're going to constantly see yellow, red, yellow, red, yellow, red. And that's, that's right. It's doing, the, it's doing the right thing until you build up those training volumes. Now, if you're coming to EXA and you actually do quite a lot of hours, but you haven't got all the data in there, well, actually, there's some pretty cool things because you can adjust this manually. And that's the really awesome thing, if I'm honest, about um, this artificial intelligence system that... Exa has is that you can now put how you feel and like if you ever had a coach the coach is always going oh how do you feel what's you know and they're trying to input how you actually feel into this because all of this is fantastic but it does only work on the data that you put in it and data is not the full picture we are human beings so coming over to those goals and now we have this fitness uh, freshness feedback and those colors of those stars can be altered by how you feel. So I think what happened is most people come to this and they feel a lot better than Excerpt is suggesting because the eight Excerpt doesn't always have the historical data that it needs to really help you out here. So I would say that in the early days of using Excerpt, you probably use this quite a lot. Uh, as you use Excerpt more and more, you, you use it less and less, but it's great. And don't be afraid to whack it all the way. Like if you are feeling super psyched, if you've had a really good night's sleep, um, you feel amazing, just put it straight into the green and Excerpt will recommend a really good hard workout to take advantage of you feeling fresh and super energized. Likewise, if you've had a rubbish night's sleep, been working late, you're feeling a bit ill, just whack it all the way to the other end and Excerpt will probably suggest a very short, very easy recovery ride, which you can probably actually do as a walk. <laughs> you know, somewhere in between you go, uh, you know, I'm not feeling it today, but I feel like I can go and do something, you know. Um, and once you're really comfortable that Excerpt's got a good track of things, you can kind of leave it in zero and then just use those big life interventions to set it um, as appropriate, really. So do it it's definitely worthwhile because that will really help. Now, one last thing, I promise you, and the reason that we're doing all of this <laughs> is so that when you go, right, I want to train today, what shall I do? Um, you can, and you're going to come into the what they call the Adaptive Training Advisor. Thank you, Excerpt. And we're going to do this in another video, but this is the whole point of doing all of this is so that when you come in here, you go, right, what shall I do today? It's read the text. That's going to give you the recommendations. See where you are with your, um, with your training plan, whether you've slightly ahead or slightly behind your plan. And then over here, it's going to say, yeah, this is the type of workout that you should do today based on the training load and your current freshness. Yeah. So, there's, this is a whole other video. So let's just get stuck into that another time. Now, I hope that video was pretty useful. Like I say, get in there, get everything uploaded, get the apps, start exploring, be happy with your fitness signature. And then let's start exploring more of the awesome features that are built into this incredible piece of artificial intelligence software. Right, until the next one, take it easy.